<laughs> Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Sci Fi and More. I'm your host, Mike Cosmos, and happy Halloween to all of you. Thank you for joining us for our first annual Sci Fi and More Shocktober Halloween special. And if you have liked the videos we have done so far, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It is the easiest thing to do to support our channel, and it costs you nothing to do so. Also, don't forget to like and share the video and hit the bell so you get all the latest alerts from our channel. For this video, we are going to focus on the and more part of sci-fi and more and cover some fun Halloween movies that terrified audiences when they came out and continue to do so today. There are a couple of movies that we are going to leave off this list simply because as their franchises had grown, the terrifying element of the movies became almost an anti-hero and fans of the movies would cheer for the villain. Those franchises would be Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. Now to be fair, I loved both franchises. The first movie in each one was really good and had a great horror element to them. So they do deserve to be mentioned since Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees both became massive pop culture icons. So, as always, if you have not seen the movies on this list, warning, there are spoilers ahead. So let's turn down the lights, get some popcorn, and let's dive into 10 fun Halloween movies. There are so many great horror movies out there for Halloween, there's no way to fit all of them into a list of 10. But there are some honorable mentions that have to be brought up for their chilling, mind-scarring nature. So with that, let's take a haunting journey together through some terrifying movies. Our first honorable mention goes to Annabelle, 2014. Annabelle is loosely inspired by the real-life story of a possessed doll, and it is the prequel to the movie The Conjuring, and the second movie produced in the Conjuring universe. The real Annabelle doll was a Raggedy Ann doll owned by a nursing student in the 1970s. It was believed to be a conduit for a malevolent spirit and was eventually taken by paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren and housed in their Museum of Supernatural Artifacts. Remember those two? Yeah, they, they got around a lot back in the day in the paranormal world. While the specific events portrayed in the movie are fictionalized, the concept of a haunted doll with a dark history is rooted in real life accounts. There are a few reasons why the movie Annabelle is so terrifying and makes for a great Halloween horror movie. First, the inclusion of a possessed doll as a central antagonist brings a sense of creepiness and fear. Dolls are often associated with innocence and childhood. So when they became a source of evil, it creates an unsettling contrast. Our next honorable mention goes to The Conjuring, 2013. The Conjuring is based on the true story of the Perrin family and their experiences in their Rhode Island farmhouse in the 1970s. The movie depicts the investigations carried out by real-life paranormal investigators, the aforementioned Ed and Lorraine Warren, who were consulted by the Perrin family during their haunting. The events portrayed in the film are said to be inspired by the actual accounts and case files of the Warrens. The movie is a haunting tale like no other. In the movie, the Perrin family moves into an old farmhouse. Little did they know, this seemingly peaceful home hides a dark secret. As strange occurrences escalate, they seek the help of the Warrens. The couple soon realized that something sinister has taken hold of the house. 
The Warrens are determined to uncover the dark history of the house and save the family from the malevolent forces tormenting them. They discover that a witch named Bathsheba, who once lived on the property, cursed the land, bringing forth a terrifying presence ready to claim its victims. As the demonic entity grows stronger, the Warrens must face their greatest challenge, risking their own lives to save the Perrin family from certain doom. As the suspense builds, the fate of the Perrin family hangs in the balance as the Warrens confront evil head-on in a battle for their souls. So, for Halloween, prepare to be captivated, horrified, and thrilled by a story of supernatural terror that will leave you breathless. Now, if you have seen this movie, please let us know your thoughts on it in the comments. Personally, I thought this movie was very eerie. And for our final honorable mention, that goes to IT 2017. Now, there were previous incarnations of IT, which came in the form of a miniseries that came out in 1990. But we are looking at the 2017 version, which personally I thought was a lot better than the 1990 miniseries. However, both the TV miniseries and the movie IT are based on the 1986 novel of the same name by Stephen King. The novel tells the story of a group of children who are terrorized by a malevolent entity taking the form of a creepy clown named Pennywise. The novel was highly successful and the movie adaptation was released in 2017 was followed by a sequel in 2019. What makes this Halloween horror movie truly terrifying is that it is the stuff of nightmares. It takes us into the eerie town of Derry, where an ancient evil lurks, preying on children's deepest fears. Its most terrifying form is Pennywise, a sinister clown that haunts the deepest caverns of our minds. Skillfully directed and visually stunning, it builds tension through expertly crafted suspenseful scenes, leaving the audience on the edge of their seats. The fear is tangible as the children face their inner demons, giving the movie an emotional depth that resonates. With its iconic portrayal of Pennywise by Bill Skarsgård, the character's erratic behavior and haunting presence send shivers down your spine. The movie excels in using a terrifying soundtrack, amplifying the sense of dread and making every scare more chilling. Now let's take an eerie journey together and experience a haunting list of 10 fun Halloween movies. Starting with number 10, Salem's Lot, 1979. Now this movie scared the life out of me the first time I saw it as a kid. If there was one movie that truly terrified me, this was it. This was the one. You know, kind of on that note, uh, what about you guys? What movie truly terrified you? I, I kind of think that would be a fun discussion. Let me know in the comments below. Take some caution and proceed slowly to prepare yourself to be immersed in a bone-chilling world which is Salem's Lot, a horror classic exceptionally terrifying for the unprepared. Salem's Lot takes us to a small and seemingly peaceful town haunted by an ancient evil that preys on its residents. With its eerie atmosphere and remarkable portrayal of vampires, the movie plunges into a nightmarish realm where darkness lurks around every corner. Salem's Lot is based on the book of the same name by famed horror writer Stephen King. So from mysterious disappearances to spine-tingling encounters, Salem's Lot masterfully builds suspense, leaving us gasping and fearing what awaits in the shadows. The movie's relentless tension keeps us on the edge of our seats throughout, as the characters battle not only the supernatural, 
but also their own deep-rooted fears. The depiction of the vampires in Salem's Lot is truly chilling, with their bloodthirsty desperation and relentless pursuit of their victims. A menacing score also amplifies the terror heightening the sense of dread and making each horrifying moment even more impactful. Whether it's a horrifying floating child outside a window or the terrifying transformation of loved ones into creatures of the night, Salem's Lot delivers unforgettable scares that will haunt your nightmares. Watch it for yourself, but beware, you may never feel safe in the darkness again. Now, just a quick fun thought about this movie, and Stephen King in general. Maybe it's just me, but aren't most Stephen King novels that are turned into major motion pictures, don't they all seem to start in some unassuming town that no one's ever heard of, in the middle of nowhere, that's for some reason just fighting off some menacing demonic vampire something horrifying it seems to be a general simple thread there but it works and i love it number nine the ring 2002 in the gripping horror film the ring a terrifying curse is unleashed upon anyone who dares watch a cursed videotape now the movie is a complete work of fiction However, the movie was adapted from a 1998 Japanese horror film called Ringu, which was inspired by the 1991 novel of the same name. Additionally, the movies and the book have their roots cemented in a centuries-old legend that hails from medieval Japan. And before anyone asks, the legend was based on a real well known as Okiku's Well which is still there to this day in Japan. The Ring was adapted into an American production in 2002. The story follows Rachel, a journalist investigating the mysterious deaths linked to this dreaded videotape. She stumbles upon a disturbing truth. Those who view it receive a phone call, hear a voice on the other end, and learn they only have seven days to live. Racing against time to save her life and the life of her son, Rachel traces the tape's origin to an abandoned cabin. Confronted by supernatural forces, she unravels the dark history surrounding Samara, the malevolent spirit trapped within the tape and seeking revenge. Now, I just have to ask, did this movie make anybody think twice about putting a VHS tape or DVD into a player and watching it? Let me know in the comments, that, that could be some interesting discussions. With creepy clues and a sense of impending doom, Rachel must solve the mystery within the cursed footage to break the cycle and save her life before it's too late. The Ring is a spine-chilling and suspenseful journey that will keep you on the edge of your seat, praying you're not the next to suffer the wrath of the curse. Can you survive the Ring? Let us know in the comments below. Number 8. The Amityville Horror, 1979 The Amityville Horror was based on real-life inspiration and the 1977 novel of the same name, which claimed to depict true events. It tells the story of the Lutz family, who moved into a house in Amityville, New York, where a gruesome mass murder had taken place just a year before. This supposedly haunted the house, resonating with audiences due to its alleged connection to real events. The film utilizes classic horror techniques such as eerie lighting, suspenseful music, and creaking doors to create a sense of fear and tension. It employs a wide range of supernatural occurrences like mysterious voices, ghostly sightings, and paranormal activities, effectively building a haunting and unsettling atmosphere throughout the movie. The movie focuses not only on external scares, but also on the psychological torment experienced by the characters. 
exploring themes of possession, family turmoil, and the breakdown of sanity further added to this unsettling nature. The film features memorable and chilling visuals, including the infamous evil-eyed windows of the house, which became synonymous with the horror genre. These visuals stick with viewers, intensifying the fear factor and contributing to the movie's lasting impact. I know those windows at that house stuck with me. Every time I saw a house like that with similar windows, I would always think those homes were haunted. How about you guys? Any creepy stories out there because of this movie that made you think there were tons of haunted houses out there? Please note that the alleged events depicted in the movie and the novel have been highly controversial and widely disputed as a hoax. Nevertheless, the film's portrayal of the terrifying supernatural occurrences captured the imagination of the audiences and made it a memorable horror movie. Number 7. Halloween, 1978 Now, you can't have a Halloween list and not have Halloween on it. The 1979 movie Halloween was inspired by multiple sources, including real-life events of urban legends. Director John Carpenter drew inspiration from an experience he had on Halloween night as a child where he encountered a white-faced stranger who he found eerie. Additionally, the film was influenced by the urban myth of a babysitter being stalked by an unknown killer. These elements were combined to create the iconic slasher film that is Halloween. In the small fictional town of Haddonfield, Illinois, a horrifying tale unfolds. It's Halloween night and evil is lurking in the shadows. Meet Michael Myers, a six-year-old boy who, one fateful Halloween night in 1963, commits a brutal and unexplained murder. Fifteen years later, Michael escapes from a psychiatric hospital, returning to his hometown with a single purpose, to continue his reign of terror. The town is oblivious to the approaching danger, as teenager Lori Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, and her friends prepare for Halloween night. One by one, Michael targets Lori and her friends, unleashing a relentless pursuit that grips audiences with fear. Can Lori survive the night and outsmart the mass killer, or will evil prevail? With suspenseful horror, terrifying jump scares, and iconic mass villain, Halloween has become one of the most influential and beloved horror movies of all time. Experience the terror of Halloween, the movie that changed the face of horror forever. Now, here's a fun fact about the Halloween movie that some of you may know, but for those who don't, the Michael Myers mask used in the 1978 movie Halloween was actually a modified Captain James T. Kirk Halloween mask from the television series Star Trek. As the story goes, the production designers for Halloween purchased the mask, made some alterations by painting it white and changing the hair to transform it into the eerie and iconic mask worn by Michael Myers in the film. Once William Shatner found out it was his face on the mask of the iconic slasher in typical Shatner form, he had some fun with it. He bought one for himself to wear on Halloween to take his daughters out trick-or-treating. A happy story born out of a gruesome slasher film. Who would ever guess that? And now you know, because knowledge is power. Number 6. The Shining, 1980 The 1980 film The Shining is an adaptation of the 1977 novel of the same name written by Stephen King. While King has stated that several elements of the story were inspired by personal experiences and locations, such as a stay at Colorado's Stanley Hotel, the story itself is a work of fiction. Stanley Kubrick, the director of the film, made several changes to the story, departing from King's original vision and created his own interpretation of the material. The Shining is considered a classic horror film for several reasons. 
Firstly, it was directed by Stanley Kubrick, a highly influential and revered filmmaker known for his meticulous attention to detail and innovative storytelling techniques. Kubrick's masterful direction brings out a sense of suspense and dread throughout the film. The film also incorporates a chilling atmospheric setting, the Overlook Hotel, where the majority of the story takes place. This is an eerie location that adds to the sense of isolation and psychological terror experienced by the characters. Also, The Shining features outstanding performances, most notably from Jack Nicholson, who portrays the lead character Jack Torrance. Nicholson's intense and unhinged portrayal of Torrance adds a sense of unpredictability and menace to the film. The 1980 film includes several intense and disturbing scenes, and different people may find different parts to be the scariest, as fear is subjective. That being said, many viewers find the scene where Jack Torrance breaks down the bathroom door with his axe while shouting the famous line, Here's Johnny, to be one of the scariest and most iconic moments of the film. Other notable scenes that are often mentioned as particularly chilling include the encounter between Danny Torrance and the twin girls in the hallway and the revelation of the decomposing woman in the bathtub. The Shining effectively explores themes of madness, isolation, and the breakdown of the family unit. The nuanced exploration of these themes, combined with the film's haunting visuals and score, create a psychological horror experience that has resonated with audiences and earned its status as a classic in the genre. Number 5. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974 The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a 1974 horror film directed by Toby Hopper. The story follows a group of five friends who find themselves stranded in rural Texas. They stumble upon a sinister family of cannibals, led by Leatherface, a chainsaw-wielding killer. As the friends fall victim one by one, they desperately try to escape from the sadistic and deranged family. With its realistic and gritty execution, the film is known for creating a terrifying atmosphere, leaving a lasting impact on the horror genre. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is often regarded as a classic and influential film within the genre, invoking fear and discomfort to audiences to this day. This film, without a doubt, is known for its intense and disturbing atmosphere throughout, making it difficult to pinpoint a single scariest part. However, many viewers find the scene in which Leatherface emerges from his room and impales one of his victims on a meat hook to be particularly unsettling. Additionally, the chase scenes and the gritty portrayal of violence contribute to the film's overall sense of horror. What did you think the scariest part of the movie is? Let us know in the comments. That, that would be an interesting discussion. Now, there was and still is some confusion as to whether or not the film was based on a true story. The answer to that is no. The 1974 movie The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not based on a true story. However, the film's promotional materials famously claim that it was based on true events, which added to its notoriety and gave it an additional element of fear for audiences. Now, even though the film was marketed as being based on true events to attract a wider audience and to act as a subtle commentary on the era's political climate, the character of Leatherface and minor story details were inspired by the crimes of murderer Ed Gein, but the plot of the movie is largely fictional. Number 4. Psycho 1960. The 1960 film Psycho was based on the novel of the same name written by Robert Blotch, which in turn was inspired by the infamous crimes of Wisconsin serial killer Ed Gein. 
Gein's gruesome acts of murder and body mutilation, as well as his disturbing fascination with his deceased mother, served as a chilling foundation for both Blotch's novel and Alfred Hitchcock's iconic film adaptation. Through the lens of fiction, Psycho explored themes of obsession, identity, and the blurred lines between sanity and madness, capturing the imagination of audiences and leaving an unshakable mark on the horror genre. In the movie Psycho, the story follows Marion Crane, a young woman who steals money from her employer and goes on the run to evade capture. Seeking refuge at the Bates Motel, she encounters the mysterious Norman Bates, and his overbearing mother. However, as the chilling plot unfolds, viewers discover that Norman has a sinister secret, leading to thrilling twists and shocking revelations that ultimately make Psycho a timeless masterpiece of suspense and horror. Now, many viewers find different aspects of the 1960 film Psycho to be particularly scary. One of the most memorable and suspenseful scenes that often stands out is the infamous shower scene. The combination of the startling violins and the iconic score, the rapid editing, and the sudden violence creates a shocking and terrifying sequence. This scene where Marion Crane is unexpectedly attacked and brutally murdered in the shower is widely regarded as one of the most terrifying moments in cinema history. The psychological terror throughout the film, including the slowly unveiling psychosis of Norman Bates also contributes to the overall fear and unease experienced by the audiences. Number 3. Alien, 1979 Alien revolves around the crew of the commercial spacecraft Nostromo. While on their way back to Earth, the crew receives a distress signal from a nearby unknown planet. They are obligated to investigate and upon landing, one of the crew members, Kane, encounters a strange pod-like structure. As he investigates further, a creature emerges and attaches itself to his face. And the crew then bring him back on board the ship, because of course they do. Unexpectedly, the creature detaches itself from Kane's face and dies. However, an even more terrifying ordeal begins when a creature referred to as a xenomorph burst out of Kane's chest, rapidly growing into a deadly and extremely aggressive creature. The remaining crew members, led by Ellen Ripley, struggle to survive as they are hunted by the xenomorph throughout the spaceship. As the crew desperately tries to fend off and eliminate the alien threat, they discover that their company, the Whalen yutani Corporation, has ulterior motives for obtaining the alien creature. The story intensifies as the crew members face numerous close encounters, sacrifices, and their fight for survival against the relentless and dangerous Xenomorph. Alien is known for its suspenseful atmosphere, iconic visuals, 
and the introduction of one of cinema's most memorable and feared creatures. Many viewers and fans of the franchise consider the moments leading up to and including the chest-bursting scene to be one of the most intense and frightening sequences of the film. The sudden and unexpected emergence of the alien creature from a crew member's chest was a shocking moment that left lasting impressions on audiences. Number 2. Nosferatu, 1922 Nosferatu is a 1922 silent horror film directed by F.W. Murnau. It is an unauthorized adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula and tells the story of Count Orlok, a vampire seeking to spread the plague in the fictional town of Weisburg. The film follows Thomas Hutter, a real estate agent who travels to Transylvania to finalize a deal with Count Orlok, looking for a new house in Weisburg. Upon arriving at the Erie Castle, Hutter realizes that the Count is actually a vampire. Desperate to return home to save his wife Ellen, Hutter escapes, but the plague carrying Orlok follows him to Weisburg. With Hutter's absence, Ellen worried about her husband's safety, must confront the vampire to protect her loved ones. Nosferatu is celebrated for his atmospheric cinematography and chilling portrayal of the vampire myth. The 1922 film Nosferatu was heavily inspired by Bram Stoker's 1897 novel Dracula. Though the film, as mentioned, was an unauthorized adaptation meaning no permission was granted by the Stoker's estate. Director F.W. Murnau and screenwriter Heinrich Galeen took significant inspiration from the original novel. The film's protagonist, Count Orlok, closely resembles Stoker's famous Count Dracula, with similar vampire traits and abilities. Likewise, the plot follows some of the key elements of the novel, such as the vampires plague spreading and the efforts of the hero, Thomas Hutter, and his wife Ellen to stop him. Although Nosferatu couldn't use the names and precise details from Dracula, it remains a significant and haunting interpretation of the classic vampire tale. Nosferatu was not particularly successful at the box office, during its initial release. In fact, the film faced legal issues regarding copyright infringement from the Stoker's estate. As a result, many copies of the film were ordered to be destroyed. But because sometimes people just don't do what they're supposed to, a few prints of the film managed to survive. Go figure. And this film eventually gained recognition as a masterpiece of German Expressionist cinema and an influential horror film. Today, Nosferatu is considered a classic and highly regarded by film enthusiasts. My only question is, was Count Orlok the vampire in Salem's Lot? Because that vampire looks like it was in both movies. I'm just saying. Number one. The Exorcist, 1973. The 1973 film The Exorcist is a horror film directed by William Friedkin. It revolves around the possession of a young girl named Reagan, played by Linda Blair. Reagan's mother, actress Chris McNeil, played by Ellen Burstyn, seeks medical help when her daughter exhibits strange and alarming behavior. As Reagan's condition worsens, Chris becomes increasingly desperate and turns to Catholic priests for help. Two priests, Father Damien Carras, played by Jason Miller, and Father Lancaster Marin, played by Max von Sydow, eventually face the demonic possession head-on, performing an exorcism to free Reagan from the evil entity within her. The film gained massive commercial success and critical acclaim, becoming a landmark in the horror genre. It is widely regarded as one of the scariest movies of all time and was nominated for 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The scariest part of The Exorcist would be subjective. 
However, one of the most iconic and unsettling scenes in the film is known as the spider walk sequence. In this scene, Reagan, the possessed girl, descends the stairs upside down on all fours with her body twisted and contorted in an unnatural manner. Other intense and disturbing moments that are often mentioned as particularly scary include the crucifix scene, the levitation scenes, and Reagan's profanity-laden and violent outburst, lest we forget about her head spinning all the way around. The inspiration for the 1973 film The Exorcist came from the novel of the same name, written by William Peter Blatty. Blatty derived inspiration for the story from a real-life case of demonic possession that occurred in 1949. The case involved a young boy in Maryland known under his alias as Roland Doe to protect his identity who allegedly exhibited signs of possession and underwent an exorcism. Blatty's novel took liberties with the original case and fictionalized it, creating a narrative that focused on a young girl named Reagan. The book's success led to the development of the film's adaptation directed by William Friedkin. The film incorporated elements of horror, religion, and the supernatural to create a terrifying and thought-provoking experience for audiences. And there you have it. We hope you have enjoyed our list of 10 fun movies for Halloween. We enjoyed putting this Halloween special together for you. This list was nothing official, nor did we go into too much of a deep dive for each movie. This was just meant to be a fun list. But if you think we missed a couple, drop a comment and please let us know. We would love to hear from you because all the comments help us make our channel better. And when I say our channel, I mean all of us. Subscribers, viewers, all of us. We are all in this together. And this is your channel too. And we want to make your viewing experience as enjoyable as possible. As always, you can follow us on our social media accounts. If you like our videos so far, like I said at the beginning of the video, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. It is one of the easiest and best ways to support our channel, and it's free to do. We hope you all have a safe and great Halloween. I know I'll be bringing out my Halloween lightsaber as I walk out of our decorated house of horrors to scare the kids when they come to get some candy. I, I, I may overdo Halloween, but the kids... They really seem to enjoy it, so I'm good with it. Happy Halloween, everyone.